Hey, first graders, uh, we're going to keep going with our Paul Cezanne still life painting today. Um, we drew it last week. We got some apples drawn. We got a plate. Hopefully, you did a design using the patterns that you know how to do, repeating some interesting looking lines or shapes on the tablecloth. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you did not draw this picture of apples, I'm going to put it up on my screen right now. If you did not draw this, okay, if you didn't do this, I recorded another video, okay? So if you need to, you should go ahead and watch that other video, okay? So I put that video just below this one, all right? So pause this video, watch that one, figure out how to draw the apples and the plate and the tablecloth, and then come back here for this one. Everybody else, here's what you're going to need today, okay? So you might need to pause this video to go get your supplies. You're going to want to fill up a cup with a little bit of water, okay? Remember, don't fill your cup full of water. That's how you make a mess. Get a little cup of water. You want a rag or a paper towel nearby in case you drip or make any spills. And then you're going to want to get your watercolor paints, okay? If you don't have watercolor paints, all right, this is what you want as your number one supply. If you don't have that, I want you to grab your markers. Get your markers, okay? But in addition to your markers, I want you to go grab some Q-tips. Go grab some cotton swabs somewhere in your house, okay? Ask mom or dad where those are hidden. They're usually in the bathroom somewhere. Uh, so go get yourself, I don't know, you probably need about three or four of these cotton swabs, okay? So go get some of these and markers if you don't have watercolor paint. I'm gonna show you how to paint these apples today right now, okay? So we're gonna take a look and uh, go ahead and start painting this. Now, a little bit of a word about your paper, all right? I'm gonna be working on this paper right here. And this paper is pretty thick, okay? It can, I can paint on this paper. I also did the drawing on this thin piece of paper. It will still work, but the problem with the thin paper is if you get it really, really wet, it's very easy to rip it. So I think a lot of you at home might have thin paper. And if you get it super wet, it really can rip. So you wanna be super duper careful. So if you are working with really thin paper, one thing you can do is you can put some newspapers underneath, some paper towels underneath your paper. That can help soak up a little bit of the water. Um, but you do want to be careful. Don't keep going over the same spots again and again and again because you will tear through your paper. So be really careful uh, to, if you've got a thin piece of paper. Be careful, okay? Um, so how do we paint this? Let's take a look at my painting. I'm going to show you what to do. I want you to watch this video. Watch how I do this. Then I want you to do it. Today, what I want you to do is do the apples and the plate, okay? The apples and the plate. Don't worry about the tablecloth. We'll do that in class next week, okay? So let's get the apples and the plate done. So let's take a look at this. So uh, my apples should be red, right? But if we think about apples, a lot of times uh, they have more than just that red color, okay? When we looked at those Paul Cezanne paintings, uh, we definitely saw that his apples had sort of that uh, variety of colors. So let's take a quick look at Paul Cezanne's apple still life paintings. Um, so right here, you can see like, you know, you've got that sort of yellows and oranges. Uh, this one, look at all the different colors of the apples that you see there. There's even some greens in there also. If you wanted to do a green apple, I think you could. You wanna be careful about green and red on the same apple because they can get kind of brown on you. But um, go ahead and, and we're gonna use some red and yellow mostly. If you want to, like I said, if you want to do a little bit of green, you could. Uh, you just wanna be careful and not use too much green, all right? So I'm gonna just go ahead and start painting like I normally would, okay? We've used the watercolor paints before. You just dip it in the water, get your brush wet, get a little bit of paint on your brush, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting a little bit of red, okay? Now, I'm gonna get my brush wet and I'm gonna just paint a little bit of water right here. It's got a little pink in it because there was a little bit of red in there. And, and I'm gonna bring in a little bit of more red paint and really kind of get that a little darker. Notice more water, a lot lighter. More paint, it gets more red, it gets a little darker. If you let it dry and come back and paint a little bit more, it'd get darker still, okay? so. Uh, that's kind of how you can think about that. Now, to get that yellow in there, I'm going to dip, 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 
Okay, remember this, dip, dip, dip. I'm gonna wipe off my brush, get it rinsed clean. Okay, so I'm gonna get it really wet and I'm gonna get some yellow in there, okay? I'm gently taking the yellow right now. And I'm gonna just kind of drip this yellow in here. And I'm gonna get my brush wet. Watch how I do this. I just let this sort of spread around. I'm not stirring it. I'm kind of letting it mix on its own. These wet areas, what happens is the, the yellow wants to go where it's already wet. And so if there's some red there, what see you can see it kind of swirling together. And that to me looks really cool. And I'm gonna add some back some red in the middle here. And the red and yellow, of course, they're gonna make a little bit of an orange color. Um, and that kind of gives us a sort of interesting sort of natural look to our apple, okay? So that's what I want you to try to do for your apples. Now, you might not have paint, okay? So what should you do? Well, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your markers and you're gonna just kind of color, okay? So I'm gonna just go ahead and color my apple like this. And this marker, look at it, it's even kind of dying on me. That's okay. I don't even need a fully alive marker. So I'm gonna leave a little spot over here for some yellow. I'm gonna leave a little spot over here for some yellow. And I'm gonna bring that yellow in here as well. So I'm coloring with my red and I'm coloring with my yellow. And I, I, I'm letting them overlap a little bit. That's fine, okay? Now we want this to look like paint though, okay? So here's where the Q-tips come in. Check this out. Take your Q-tip, dip it in water. Remember, just a little bit of water because if you have thin paper, you don't want to rip through this. And just take that wet Q-tip and start rubbing it on the marker. And look what happens. It starts to spread it around like it is paint, okay? And it will blend and mix. And it really ends up looking not like marker, but instead it ends up looking a lot like paint. Now, once this dries, it's gonna be pretty hard to tell the difference between this one and that one. Um, you might be able to see a little bit, but you can always go over it just a little bit more. You could let it dry and then bring a little more water if you're worried about it ripping. Uh, that can work as well, okay? So you're gonna very carefully, whether you're using paint or marker, you're going to paint in these apples. Then after you've done that, you also wanna paint in your plate, okay? Now here's the thing, you wanna be really careful when you do your plate because if you color your plate in and it overlaps your apples, these colors are gonna to mix together. So you might set this aside and let it dry for a few minutes, or if you wanna be very careful about painting your plate, you could do that also. So here's the question for you. If my apples are red and I want those apples to really show up on my painting really well, what colors could I use for my plate? I want you to think about that. What colors could I use for my plate? I've got red apples, right? And I want them to be bold. The apples, right? They're the star of the show. We want these apples to really show up well. And so what colors could I put next to this red to make sure that the apples really pop out and really show up really well? Well, we did a work of art in kindergarten class where we did a fish. And on that fish, we used very similar colors to these apples. We used warm colors. We use orange, we use yellow, and we use red on that painting. And the fish, when we colored it with warm colors, really stood out against the background of the blue uh, water, okay? So I would say for your apples to do an awesome looking background, I would use cool colors, okay? So for your plate, don't worry about the tablecloth, but for your plate, I would use purple or blue or green. Any one of these three colors will look really good next to your apples, okay? So let's try a little bit of blue right now, see how that looks. Oh, exactly. Like, look, you can tell already. Look at how that, that red just really kind of pops out against the blue. The red really shows up nicely next to that blue plate, 
Okay. Now, again, since I did not let mine dry, I want to be really, really careful when I go near the edge of my apple because it, with my apple still wet, that red paint could come in and start mixing with the blue paint and it will make turn it purple. It won't be the end of the world if that happens, but it's just something to watch out for that you could be careful of. Okay. Uh, so, what I want you to work on, oh, see, there's a little bit of mixing right there. See how that kind of little color burst right there? That happened. So even Mr. Bremer, when I was being careful, it mixed up a little bit. I'm going to just brush that aside. can barely tell it happened. Okay. So I want you to finish your apples today, and I want to fin you to get on your plate today. Okay. But also leave yourself a little bit of time to clean up everything also. Okay. So, so what we're doing, okay, we've got apples to paint. We've got the plate to paint. Next week, we can work on this in class, okay? Because after you watch this video, you're going to have about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so to work on your, your project, okay? So take those 20 minutes to work on it, uh, get it done, do a good job, uh, and I'm, I'm excited to see what you do next week, all right? You guys have a great week, and I will see you next week live. Bye!